to be a key matchup this afternoon for Miami. And that man, DJ Vasilovich, one of the top three-point shooters in the country and in Miami history. Yeah, they must find him pit on the perimeter, as you said, across half-court range. Uh, he will look to pull up. It's good to have you with us on Super Sunday. Thanks for spending part of it with us. An important game for both squads, there's no doubt about that. Maybe a swing game, Malcolm, in terms of a confidence perspective. Yeah, it really does, and Miami comes out in man-to-man. -man. Uh, we're gonna talk about their injuries uh, coming into this game. Uh, they're without Chris Likes, arguably one of the most dynamic and explosive guards uh, in the ACC, so uh, let's see how long they stick with man-to-man -man versus Pitt. Yeah, Likes is a huge loss, averaging 15.7 points per game. Their leading scorer and an energizer for them on both ends of the floor. Sam Wardenberg has the lob to Rodney Miller, and he's been red hot. Miller, he's shooting 68% in his last six games. Yeah, that's excellent offensive execution, patience, dribble driving, and that's a nice little lob pass. And as you said, Miller uh, has been playing well for Miami. Nice finish with the left hand. Something to watch for the U today, Malcolm, is the play of number five, Harlan Beverly, playing point guard for likes. Now, Beverly's more of a natural two guard, Jim Laranega told us, so he is going to be a spotlight performer. Yeah, in particular against Pitt, they're one of the top teams, Pittsburgh, at turning you over, uh, so they must handle the pressure of that Pitt is gonna apply in this game, as we see right here, picking up full. As Miller handles across the timeline. Wong in the lane, the freshman doing it effectively. Well, that's two possessions now. They've been able to break Pitt down off the dribble. But that time, Wong with a beautiful finish. Xavier Johnson and the student section here at the Oakland Zoo throwing confetti up in the air, and that is for Kobe Bryant. It's purple and gold confetti. It's usually just newspaper. And today, to honor Kobe, it's the purple and gold. So a great touch from the student section. Yeah, it really is. And obviously, everybody's still dealing with the aftermath of really a tragic situation. So as you said, really a nice gesture by the student section of Pitt. Just a week ago, as Kobe and Gigi Bryant passed away. Johnson on the baseline to Eric Hamilton, the transfer from UNC Greensboro. They're going to need his offense to increase throughout the rest of the year. And that's all set up by Xavier Johnson. Nice play that time. Got down to the baseline, drew two defenders, and then kicked it right back out. Do you like the trap in the front court by Pitt? Yeah, and I, again, Miami, they're going to have to be mindful of that all game with these pick guards. Isaiah Wong, 9 for 18, shooting his last two and a steal by Johnson. Nice pass to Champagny, and the freshman on the angle from the block. Starting off, Johnson making some nice decisions. That time, in the open court off the steal, and uh, speaking with the coaching staff uh, of Pitt, that's what they want uh, from him. He is a guy that can get in the lane all day, but how much he can make the other guys around him better, uh, that's going to be key for Pitt. Rebound by Trey McGowan's after the Vasilovich Mitch. McGowan's the deep three. And the putback is good by Adi's Tony. Adi's Tony, 13 points per game, his last six. And his rebounding has improved as well. Yeah, that's a poor job by Miami, but uh, give Tony credit as we talked about his last six games. Uh, he has been the most consistent player, according to Jeff Capel, for this uh, pit team, and that time getting on the offensive glass. Miami coming out perhaps its most complete effort of the season, says Jim Laranega, when they beat Virginia Tech the other night by 10, and Wardenburg that stick back for the U. And Wardenburg's offense, he's playing over 30 minutes a game, Malcolm, but he's not giving them what they need. Well, they're going to need it today, and that's how you get yourself going early on the offensive glass. We've already talked about it. Uh, Chris likes their leading scorer out uh, with a groin injury, and uh, they're going to need all hands on deck. Long drive by Tony's off the line. Vasilovich, the tempo push. And Tony engulfs another board. Johnson 
Jeff Capel says he's been too inconsistent after a sterling freshman campaign. Yeah, that's a pretty good look right there, though. And uh, his hesitation dribble is one of the best I've seen. Uh, he's got the hezzy and then quick explosive step. That's a pretty clean look that time. Wide open fine line jumper, just a little short. Vasilovic, good pass to Miller for the slam. Excellent ball movement by Miami. Four points for Rodney Miller. Yeah, Miller, a guy that has worked on his conditioning. Uh, you can see the uh, added explosiveness that time to finish off the beautiful dime by Vasilovic. Miller coming off an 11 and 8 rebound game against the Hokies. Drive by Johnson. Pitt has some good looks, just not falling in the early going. Yeah, that's twice now. Uh, you'll take that look if you're Pitt. Quick hands by Hamilton triggers the turnover. What a move by Johnson. Boy, that was special by Xavier Johnson. That's where he excels. And Pitt, we talked about it, danger zone for Miami, turning the ball over. You can't do it against this Pitt team. They're one of the best in the ACC at turning you over, and then that right there is the end result. Wardenburg will take it and get fouled. Eric Hamilton meeting Wardenburg in the post. Jeff Capel, we know where he was 25 years ago. Where were you? 20 for those memorable moments between Duke and UNC. And another outstanding clash coming up next Saturday between Duke and North Carolina. Sam Wardenburg at the line for the U. And now Keith Stone will check in for Wardenburg. And Jeff Capel and his brother Jason Capel, former coach at Appalachian State, Jason Capel. And the Duke and North Carolina rivalry in the family as Capel was an excellent player for the Tar Heels. One of the great brother combos in college basketball. And those guys both have had some memorable moments. Uh, at their respective schools, obviously great playing careers, uh, now doing it and getting it done uh, in the coaching ranks. Isaiah Wong with the drive and our own Seth Greenberg on staff with his brother Brad. But the first six plus minutes in this ball game, Malcolm, your impressions on both sides is 17 of the 19 total points have been in the paint. Yeah, and I think also the key number we need to watch Pitt six points off of turnovers early. Uh, again, uh, Miami without Chris Likes, uh, that's something Pitt is going to look to capitalize on. Uh, the guards are already aggressive in the passing lanes, and Pitt definitely excels in the open court off the of turnovers. Well, Brown in the game for the Panthers. And we have a foul off the drive by Champagny. Looks like we got a technical foul. As Jim Laranega looks on. As he's built an impressive resume in Coral Gables. Uh, what a job he has done. And we had to take a look at his the resume 11th in wins, active coaches. And right now, though, the refs are going to go to the monitor. Now, there was a, I think, words exchanged after the block right here at Tony. Excuse me, Champagny uh, with the nice move. And then, yeah, I think that's what they're looking at. Looks like he was standing over him talking. And the referees are going to uh, cut just in to see how they call this. Because obviously, Champagny pushed him afterwards. Uh, but it was what led up to that. I think that's what uh, they're reviewing right now. James Brady and Jeffrey Clark with the official review at the table. And college basketball last night, a game on ESPN2. He's watching at Cincinnati. There was a biting incident with yeah. Dejan Giroux of Houston getting ejected, a, a bite on Keith Valentine. There was a lengthy review, but that's a good good vantage point. Champagny reacting, though, to the initial talk by Walker. Yeah, and, you know, again, you just you can't do it. Again, you're doing it right in front of the refs. You're standing over a guy, and then... You're talking, but I think what made it worse is is the knee. Uh, he basically gave him a little shove uh, with the knee. So now the refs are going to come together, and it'll be interesting to see if both guys uh, or they do the initiator.
Jim Laranega getting the explanation. He told me that he was very happy with their win at Virginia Tech because it was a complete effort on both ends of the floor as Miami won 71-61. Double contact technical foul called. Free throws offset. And there's your explanation. So you get your double technical with the contact. That's basically your parent telling you knock it off, but we're not going to have any more of that. Uh, and I think it's a good call by the refs. Again, you don't want this game to get out of hand early. Uh, certainly on the road, you can ill afford to have guys doing that. Referees right on top of it, getting it under control. That's really what you want, right? Just as long as they have enough authority to make those decisions and make sure that their imprints on the game. So Champagne, who's been extremely consistent for the Panthers as they search for an offensive identity, hit offensively. It's been a bit of a sled pull thus far for them, averaging 66 points per game. That's 13th in the ACC. Shot clock down to four. Nice drive by Beverly. Yeah, nice little Euro step that time over Xavier Johnson. Good body control and no help that time by Pitt. And that's excellent touch. That's not an easy shot right there, right in front of the basket off the Euro. Good concentration. Beverly, the freshman from Detroit. Adi's Tony with range from the corner in the three-pointer. He has five. He continues his hot play that time from beyond the arc and again another nice dribble drive kick out and for a wide open look from three Miami utilizing ball screens as part of their offense been a staple in the nine years of Jim Laranaga as Stone misses Gowans the hot pass off the hands of Terrell Brown and Brown's been a bit of an enigma since entering the pit program. He really has bright idea, but right here, this is another nice play. Trey McGowan's little jump stop instead of going for a jumper kick out pass. And we've seen that now. Johnson and also McGowan's making nice plays for their teammates. And but that's something that Jeff Capel and staff have been working on with this backcourt. Again, they're so talented and their ability to get into the lane. I think it's those type of decisions that they want to see more of and to start this game off. They've set their teammates up with some open looks. Strong drive again by Beverly. And Brown with the board. They're getting in the paint. McGowan's trying to counter. Here comes Vasilovic. The floater is effective. Both teams trying to push the tempo. You're not surprised by that. No, not at all. And right back at you, Vasilovic, with a nice touch. That time they caught Pitt off balance in transition. McGowan's. And here comes Beverly. Isaiah Wong, part of his freshman duo in the backcourt now with the injury to Chris Lights. Beverly gets rejected by Brown. And the drive to Tony. And the N1. Pitt in transition. Beautifully done. Yeah, and this is where they excel. Off the great defense. Ended for Jim Laranega and his coaching staff, and he told me that depth has been an issue even with those guys in the lineup Malcolm now three games without lights and it's difficult for them to comp compensate especially with a young team yeah and it's been difficult for them just to practice again the guys have been banged up all year and obviously he has put together a patchwork but this guy right here when healthy one of the better shooters in the ACC uh, DJ Vasilovic uh, that time again off the bounce uh, he is not a guy that is uh, he can shoot off the catch, but uh, he is uh, better off the bounce, uh, believe it or not, and he has got unlimited range. Also pitched shorthanded with the loss of Ryan Murphy, their fourth leading scorer, transfer from Charlotte and New Mexico Junior College. He has a concussion, suffered in practice 
on Thursday. So a battle of attrition between both squads. Man, what a year it has been. Multiple teams are dealing with injuries to key guys. And certainly we talked about it, the importance of this game for both teams. Try to keep moving up the standings in the ACC. Wardenberg back in the ball game. Works out of the double team. A quarter three by Wardenberg. And the rebound for Xavier Johnson. He'll take the three. Vasilovich quickly in the front court. Too quick of a look for Johnson. Well, it's an open look, but again, in that situation, I think the key thing is that they got back in transition on D. Johnson the three again. He's not shy. And that one right near, you can tell Miami, uh, they'll live with him shooting threes. Uh, where they don't want him speaking with the coaching staff. Jim Liranega, Chris Caputo, he said, listen, we do not want them in the paint. Uh, we can live with them shooting jumpers. Obviously, we'll adjust if he starts making them. Uh, but right now, they're going to live with him shooting threes. And two things that Jeff Capel wants these last 10 games in conference. Better defensive rebounding and better shooting. And a foul, says Teddy Valentine. Offensive foul. It's on Rodney Miller, his first. Looks like they got him for the hook on the baseline. Both teams struggling from three. Miami 0 for three. Pittsburgh 1 for four. Shooting seems simple enough, Malcolm, and the numbers aren't kind for Pitt. 42% field goal percentage, that's 12th in the 15-team ACC, and just 5.43s per game. 30% from three, that's 11th, but there are your numbers. And always a rugged defensive team, 9-0 and and holding teams to 60 points or less. Their magic number 60 or less. Yeah, and I think that's been their calling card to start this off with. They have a really talented young core. Uh, I think arguably one of the most athletic uh, backcourts uh, in the ACC. I think obviously the shooting numbers, though, that has to improve uh, for them going up. But I think one of the bright spots has been defensively uh, at times they've been able to turn teams over and create offense with their D. It's also a slim margin of error, and that's definitely a characteristic throughout the ACC. Three or four possessions a game make the difference. The defense again by the Panthers drawing a traveling violation. Sixth turnover for the Canes. Ball hawking Panthers defense. How about those numbers? Yeah, and that's been, again, that has been uh, really their formula for success. You talked about that number holding teams below 60. They're undefeated when that happens. McGowan's. Abdul Kareem Kulabali, the freshman in the post. Kevin McHale would be proud of that up and under right there. That's a beautiful head fake uh, back up uh, with the right hand. And it's all set up by, again, Trey McGowan's nice pass uh, after breaking down the Miami D. And Ten of the pit points coming off Miami turn. 28 games decided by five or fewer. And I think it's so key to have your backcourt uh, in sync uh, the close games out uh, get your guys in position to win as you already noted the numbers uh, a lot of games have come down to one or two possessions Jeff Capel was asked earlier this week whether his team has matured and he said no not really because if we had we'd be six and four or seven and three in the ACC and not four and six and a lot of that has been their inability to close out games under the four timeout it's been a two possession game for the majority of the season for them as Johnson drives and makes it a seven point Panthers lead but I think Malcolm again that's a characteristic that kind of typifies the ACC this year yeah but I think the one thing he does have going for them they talent their core of the young guys therefore are very very talented and that's part of the process but you can see the improvement is there Vasilovich with the air ball. And that won't help the Miami cause. 
Xavier Johnson gets in the paint, something they want to avoid. And that right there, uh, Miller needs to be up, hedging higher. Uh, you cannot give Xavier Johnson uh, that much space coming off a screen and roll. A nice job of him that time, identifying and then finishing with the left. So Miami takes a timeout. Jim Larinick has hit a drought. And that's problematic, Malcolm. Yeah, it really has. And it's been the turnovers. Right now, Pitt has 10 points off of turnovers. They've done a nice job converting uh, when they've been able to turn Pitt, excuse me, turn Miami over. Vasilovich corrals the rebound. The Canes have missed their last five shots. Rodney Miller, big part of their offensive success the last week. Keith Stone, the Florida transfer, and he's been injury plagued. Yeah, both teams really struggling from beyond the arc. McGowan's. He'll say, you know what? That struggle might be over. <laughs> hey, what do I know? Uh, well, that right there is obviously a pleasant sight uh, if you're a Pitt fan. And Miami basically has been daring them to shoot the ball from beyond the arc. McGowan shooting 30% from three. Here's Isaiah Wong to snap the Miami skid. He has five. Isaiah Wong, a top 100 recruit. But he's had to grow up in a hurry due to their injury problems. Yeah, and really, that's uh, one of, the, I guess, the few things you can say about the injury to Chris Likes. Uh, Wong has seen uh, extended minutes uh, at that point guard position. Wardenberg. And Wong on the follow. Two straight threes for Isaiah Wong. So Wardenberg misses the layup, and then Wong with a counterpunch. Yeah, second chance opportunity that time off the offensive transition miss. And Wong again. Court Johnson forced it and a turnover. Yeah, that's one that Xavier Johnson has to let fly again. I know he's a struggle, but he's wide open uh, off of a nice pass and dribbled right into three guys and then turned it over. So a good timeout by Jim Laranega. Maybe just the antidote they needed, but Isaiah Wong. With six straight points for the U. Yeah, and they've been under control as well, too. That time uh, off the breakdown, and then this one, hustle point, wide open three. He makes a pit play. Hey, excuse me, and uh, you look at him last two games, efficiency. Uh, I think that's the key word. It's been an efficient uh, output from the freshman guard. He had 10 points against Virginia Tech. Earlier this week, also a 19 point game against North Carolina on January 25th. Hadis Tony, terrific position on the baseline, and he's got a soft touch around the hoop. Yeah, and that's great use of his body that time, shielding the defender and then going up on the other side with the left hand. Well, he just continues to impress uh, with his play. He's already in double figures, he has 10. Miller. The putback slam. That's twice now. Miller showing off the hops. Worked on his body and conditioning over the offseason, and you can tell it has paid off. Putting it back with authority. His last five games, 11 and a half points and eight rebounds. He has six. Champagne, the drop off to Tony. That's just too easy as Tony has 12. And that's his average the last six games. Yeah, unselfish play. Uh, by Champagne, though. A lot of guys might have tried to force that one up. Saw his teammate had a better look and angle. Unselfish ball that time by the freshman Justin Champagne. Seven assists for Pitt on 12 baskets. And on the defensive end, Champagne is industrious. So Pitt thriving as we hit tough loss to Boston College. The Eagles home. It's a sellout at Connie Form and Chestnut Hill. They'll take on Ninth ranked Duke, that one on ESPN Tuesday at 7, and then Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech on ACCN as well. So, always jam packed with college basketball action, and Malcolm, this league 
has been extremely competitive and a, a Seminoles team of Jeff Cable thinks the possibility that they might be a Final Four squad along with Louisville and Duke. You know, people say the league might be down this year, but they also have three Final Four teams. Yeah, and you can't say enough about the job Leonard Hamilton has done building that into a consistent winner. Just uh, can't say enough. And always deep, uh, they're always going to get after you on the defensive end, and they just run guys at you. Champagny, the offensive rebound. And he picks up contact. You know, he may not be known for his rebounding, but he leads the team in rebounding at seven per game. And I think it's sheer will. He doesn't necessarily have the bulk that you might need from a classic rebounder, but he's got the athletic ability and the positioning. Wednesday is National Signing Day, and the huddle will break down all the ACC recruits with our Signing Day special at 5.30 Eastern on ACCN and the ESPN app. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. Back to your point on Champagne. He's got four double-doubles coming into this game. I would agree with you wholeheartedly. He's very active on the offensive and defensive glass using positioning. And he's very opportunistic on the offensive glass. Pitt continues to capitalize off Miami turnovers, 11 points off eight turnovers. Nifty dribbling by Isaiah Wong, who's been effective. Shot clock under five for Wardenberg and Champagny with the steal. What's been the main issue plaguing Miami on the offensive end with the absence of Likes and Mugusti? Uh, exactly what we would expect. Uh, turnovers. Uh, right now, Pitt is dominating that game. Ten points off of turnovers. Uh, really, that is uh, really the biggest difference. Both teams really have not shot the ball well from the perimeter, but Pitt has done a nice job capitalizing on the turnovers. Tony, a wild shot off the baseline. He's fouled. Beverly with his second the freshman guard and Tony at the line and that's the number right there you look at it nine force turnovers and now 11 points uh, off the of turnovers uh, that's the ball game right there thus far early on and I'm speaking with Jeff Capel about this young man at the line um, who lost his grandmother uh, Jeff Capel talked about uh, during the summer he found out while he was in the study hall his grandmother Harriet Tony Cotton uh, and it really impacted that young man and Jeff Capel uh, gave him you know his knowledge on losing his father going through that and he said look it was a really traumatic situation for him so uh, really uh, credit to the coaching staff of Pitt uh, putting their arms around him and he has been playing some fantastic ball for them as of late in these last six games for Pitt. He has on both ends of the floor as Jim Laranega needed a timeout. Miami had trouble getting the ball in with the constant pressure by Pitt and defense. Always stressed by Jeff Capel. And that has been a huge part of their success. Yeah, it really has been the bright spot for them. Uh, getting out in transition. Nice play by Xavier Johnson off the turnover. Again, they're active in the passing lanes. And then they're off to the races. Beautiful move uh, by Xavier Johnson. And then again, the defense starting the offense, getting out in transition, make a simple play. That time, Tony with the finish in. That's something that they have done well of this season. Long kept his wits about him after getting harassed. In the lane, and Teddy Valentine with a foul call. John, I've been impressed with Wong's ability to get into the lane against the pit guards, uh, whether it's Johnson or McGowan's. Great body control. He's got good size. Very shifty with the ball. And again, he's done that multiple times in this game where he's been able to break down that pressure, get into the lane, use his body to either finish or get to the free throw line. Long at the line with eight points. Third trip to the line for Miami. This will be their fourth attempt. 
shooting 74% from the line. It's a seven point Panthers lead. Pitt's seven of their last nine games decided by 10 points or fewer. And they've had a decided home court advantage since this building opened 17 years ago. 260 wins, that's sixth in the nation. Kansas number one in that department with 277. Champagny. How about that athleticism? Tough pass, but he gathered it and laid it in. Silovich trying to beat the pressure of Johnson. Shot clock off for the U. Ice through the middle. Wardenberg for three. Johnson from half court. Trying to pull a Jeff Capel 25 years ago today, but it's off the line. Capitalize off the turnovers. Constant pressure by Pittsburgh. Great to have you with us, and thanks for spending part of your Super Sunday with us on the ACC Network. Miami three and seven in conference. Isaiah Wong, who was their best offensive player in the first half, starts off on a good note. He has 11. Yeah, and the pick guards, really, they've been unable to keep him out of the paint. He's doing a nice job breaking down Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan's uh, with his ball handling and ability uh, to finish. Uh, that's not an easy uh, finish, that last one he had. Uh, but that's with contact guys around him. And he's able to concentrate and then put up some points. That's the fifth Pittsburgh turnover. If you're just joining us, Miami without its two leading scorers, Chris Likes and Cameron Mugusty. Likes missing his third straight with a groin injury. Mugusty has a back problem. Mugusty on the bench for the U on the left. He's an Oklahoma transfer. Rodney Miller with the slam. Good start for the Hurricanes. As Miller has eight, he's averaging over 11 in his last five games. Yeah, that's beautiful out of bounds underneath. Poor communication by Pitt, and Miller continues uh, to show off the hops. Gowans to Eric Hamilton. Up and under. Hamilton is a key player for them in these last 10. Jeff Capel needs more balanced scoring, and it'll be a big part of whether they have the ability to finish games. Yeah, I think the X factor is him. You're right. The backcourt, obviously, with the turnovers and them shooting the ball, but uh, getting that fourth or fifth option, uh, in particular uh, with Ryan Murphy out, uh, they need his production. And Murphy also missing the game with a concussion. Rebound by Miller. And the foul. James Breeding calling the foul on Eric Hamilton. Inbounds pass. Good pass by Beverly to Miller. Yeah, beautiful execution. Again, no communication on that pick. And Miller and continues to play well. You take a look at his numbers the last five games. And I think the key number is the rebounding number. Uh, he's really done a nice job uh, on the defensive glass for Miami. Miami holds a plus five edge in rebounding this afternoon. And that's unique because they're minus 5.0 this season. Just 33 rebounds per game. That's 14th in the ACC. Pitt led by as many as 10 in the first half. McGowan's with the three. Kept alive by Champagny. And the three from the corner by Tony. Long corrals the board. Well, you can see the strategy by Miami. They're letting Pitt shoot from the three-point line. Again, whether it's ball screens, they're going under them, or dribble drives, they just want to keep the ball out of the paint, and they're forcing Pitt to be a perimeter jump shooting team. Well, Pitt's only made two three-pointers in nine attempts. And that's what Jeff Capel told us. He said, we need much better shooting and we need better defensive rebound. Two ingredients they've been missing in their four and six conference start. And Jim Laranega on the other side, he talked about paint touches. Uh, we have to limit of the ball getting in there off the pass or the bounce, and they've done a nice job 
hanging around in this game by doing that, keeping Xavier Johnson and Trey McGowan out of the paint. Xavier Johnson was outstanding last year in his freshman campaign. Been a bit more inconsistent this year. And the foul is on Harlan Beverly, his third. And that's not a good foul by Beverly. Obviously, you're shorthanded, so you don't have a deep roster. But uh, we talked about the three-point shooting numbers. Uh, Pitt, there's no need to pick him up out that far. Certainly don't want to foul him. Gowan's forced to pass. I like what Miami's doing on the defensive end to start the second half. It's great execution. And obviously, it has worked in their game planning. I think forcing Pitt and to shoot the ball from beyond the arc. Beverly will take the open three. Wong tries to follow it up, but here comes the Panthers. McGowan's pushing the tempo. Strong drive by Trey McGowan's, who had 18 and seven assists in the first meeting with Miami on January 12th. Only five for McGowan's, but he's a guy they're going to need. 12 and a half points per game for Trey McGowan's. Also defensively, Malcolm. Two or more steals in 10 of his last 12 games. Yeah, he's one of the best steal guys in the ACC. As we take a look at the foul, Pitt fans not happy with that one. Ray McGowan's getting ready, but Oregon is going to be tough to stop with Ionescu and company. Yeah, I love Serena. And watching them go to battle, obviously, that's always fun when you get so much talent on the court. Uh, but you're right, I think Gina will have his guys, his girls ready uh, to go in that one. That's a big one in women's college basketball. Miami Malcolm hanging around impressively. Two possession game with Vasilovich converting both. And at times you thought this one might get off the tracks for them. It was a 10 point lead for Pitt at one point in the first half, but Miami has battled back. Yeah, and I like the change right now. They go to the 2 3 matchup zone. Uh, we talked about the numbers right now. Pitt shooting 22% from the three point line. Don't want guys getting into foul trouble. We already talked about the injury issues. They're shorthanded Miami. So nice move and change up uh, by Jim Larinaga. And Miller continues uh, his impressive play on both ends that time with the left hand finish. Rodney Miller, a vital component for this Miami offense in their last 10 games in the ACC. And he's contributed with 12. Champagny with the three. Miller. It's tied up with the possession towards Pittsburgh. Rodney Miller, great footwork in the post. Yeah, beautiful pass by Wardenberg. A nice interior passing and then another nice finish that time with the left. And that's all set up, though, by their D getting stopped. And then Wardenberg with some nice interior passing. Miller redshirted last year after his up and down sophomore season so he's learned he's shed the weight as you mentioned earlier and he's capitalized on some increased experience with McGowan's in the lane McGowan's has seven five below his season average and that's great patience by Pitt against the zone don't settle for jumpers that time McGowan's breaking it down nice little high ball screen Silovich from the elbow. Good pass to Wardenberg to Miller. Oh, that was outstanding ball movement. That's twice now, Wardenberg. What a pass. Beautiful ball movement, backdoor cut, and then Wardenberg again with a beautiful interior pass, which led to a dunk. I count that about four now for Miller in this game. Four dunks. McGowan's the deep three. And a rebound by Kulabali. Freshman. Tony took it away. They'll take it again to the rim. And Champagny getting dirty down low. And he's out rebounded. Pit by three. Here's a three by Tony. Got trouble buying a bucket. But a foul on the post. 
Right, that's about four second chance opportunities that Pitt had on one possession. And Miami continues to dare them to shoot the ball. I mean, they're not even running out at guys uh, on the three point line. They just have to do a better job, though, on the defensive glass. Pitt doing a nice job creating second chance opportunities. Tony Vasilovich a moment ago picked up his first foul. Miami trailed by nine at the half. Trap on Vasilovich. Wardenberg, the ACC's only player from New Zealand, the back door. Couldn't convert, but he's fouled. So Miller from the high post, finding the cutting. Wardenberg, good adjustments made by Jim Laranaga and his staff on the offensive end. Well, they're Keep using Pittsburgh on the wrong track. Well, they're using Pitt's aggressiveness in the passing lane against them. Again, we've seen now twice backdoor cuts. That's what you want to do against a team that's overplaying you, which Pitt does. We talked about uh, their steals number. So, uh, ball fakes, backdoor cuts. Uh, but I think the key thing is you have two bigs, Wardenberg and Miller, that are pretty good passers from that high post area. Two point game with Miller to the bench and Keith Stone, the Florida transfer. In for the Hurricanes. I think if you ask Jim Laranega, you have about 30 points, close to 30 points on the bench out with injuries. Mogusky and Chris Likes. And you got a one-point game. A little over 13 minutes to go in the second half. He'd be pretty happy with that. You're signing up for that in a heartbeat. Johnson. Pitt has missed their last seven field goal attempts. Shooting 23% in the half. Vasilovich. Boy, that was great by DJ Vasilovich. And Miami grabs the lead. Jeff Capel flustered and he takes a timeout. Well, that's just beautiful. A uh, DJ Vasilovich uh, with the left hand runner. Looking like Stevie Nash on that one right there. High ball screen. You can't ask for better offensive possessions. DJ Vasilovich with the left. Now Miami back on top. Tying his career high, and Malcolm Huckabee, five of his last six games, he scored 10 or more, and he's been an enormous part of the Miami resurgence as they grab their first lead since they led 4-2 to two early in the first half. Yeah, he's been huge in this game for Miami. I think the other adjustment, uh, going to the zone, uh, the 2-3 matchup zone really uh, has put the brakes on the momentum that Pitt had, and uh, they've just been unable uh, to make uh, any plays against this zone against Miami. So some anxious moments for the second-year Pitt coach, Jeff Capel. Seven turnover for the Panthers. I agree with you. The adjustment they made going to the 2-3 zone has flummoxed the Pitt offense. And the fact that they're only shooting 15% from three has not helped their cause. Well, neither team shooting well. Miami at 16, but I think what they've done is cut down on the turnovers. And then uh, you talked about it earlier. These two guys, Vasilovich and Miller, now on the bench, have been uh, more than enough offense for Miami uh, to hang around in this game and eventually take the one-point lead. Johnson, the back iron three. Champagne. More dirty points in the post for Justin Champagne. He's only a freshman from Brooklyn. He has nine and six rebounds. Wardenberg. Well, you can't ask for a better look. That's twice now Wardenberg in this game wide open from the corner. But he's got to let it fly. Nobody around him for Pitt, but that's one that he's got to have to go. Put back attempt by Brown. The block by Wong. Tony trying to counter. Good hustle on both sides. And it will be Pitt ball. Both teams struggling from three. Just four combined three-pointers and 29 attempts. Miami dealing with some momentum to start the first half and a travel 11th turnover for the U but 
McGowan's moments ago. The inbounds and power slam by Adis Tony couldn't convert. Yeah, and that's a missed opportunity. Uh, that really uh, has been the story in the second half. They've had some open looks from three and then opportunities like that. And there's your first three of the second half for Pitt from Trey McGowan's. Much needed as he has 10. Miami, Miami's only lead led in the game for two minutes and nine seconds. Rodney Miller. And a foul. It's on Terrell Brown. His second, fourth on the Panthers. As Miller tries to muscle in, you know, he's too shy of tying his career high set January 15th against NC State with 16. Yeah, Miami's doing a nice job playing to their matchup. Again, uh, they identified in man-to-man -man pit. Uh, Miller is uh, their strength. Uh, they are going to him. We saw in that previous package where we saw some nice interior passing. That time, isolate him on the block, let him go to work. Pitt decided not to double, and he's at the free throw line. You know the first time he dunked was what age it was I believe it was I'm gonna say 11 close it was 12 which I can appreciate because the first time I dunked I was 13 now we're talking on regulation hoops right yes what you're questioning that uh, well, I need to see some footage of that one <laughs> the nerf doesn't count no that does not count at all I can't believe you're questioning my elevation skills that's the first time you dunked I'm gonna go 12. Oh, of course you are. Rebound by Harlan Beverly. One man fast break, out of control, and another turnover by the U. That's their 12th. And a water polar player in high school. And really, it's an interesting story with him. Uh, prior to him, he was a swimmer, and then obviously growing to close to. Uh, seven feet not too many. I don't think there's too many seven-foot water polo players, but Trey McGowan's uh, continues uh, Now in this last three to four minute stretch some hot shooting and as you said much needed they've struggled uh, Throughout this game McGowan's with two big threes for Pitt 16 double-figure games for Trey McGowan's Vasilovich aggressive towards the bucket and the foul but 20 points for Pitt off Miami turnovers. There's your storyline of the game. Yeah, and right here, though, some good ball movement back and forth. And Miami, again, continues to allow Pitt uh, to shoot threes. And uh, that's key uh, to close this game out because, obviously, if he continues uh, to knock down threes, they're going to have to come out of that zone. I think they might give it one more possession, see if they can force uh, Pitt into another long three. If he makes it, then, though, obviously, they're going to have to get out of the zone. And, uh, go back to man. Well, if you're Jim Larry, are you living with those three point attempts? Well, obviously, uh, up until the last two by McGowan's, yes. But if he makes three in a row or somebody else knocks one down, then obviously you have to think about coming out of the two three matchup zone. Tony thought about it. Johnson eyes the shot clock. Three on the shot clock. Tony, the open three. McGowan's keeps it alive. And a steal. The Keystone. Eight turnovers for the Panthers. And Miami playing without Chris Likes and Cameron McGusty. Stone. And McGowan's the rebound. I don't like that look. Miller, again, he has been the guy. Uh, that has been the problem for Pitt. Get him a touch on every offensive possession. Xavier Johnson. Brown. And it's going Miami's way. Xavier Johnson, an unorthodox shot. Form is a little bit slow to come for him. Yeah, it is, but I, I think the, the release point is fine. I think, obviously, the results in terms of uh, numbers in this game have not been there. I think uh, on the other side for Miami, they're doing a nice job out of the zone. The one area that has been problematic, though, is rebounding out of the zone. Pitt has done a nice job getting some second chance opportunity. Pitt plus five in the rebound department and a kickball. So it's going towards Pitt. 
Last 8.08, Malcolm. Keys to the game on both sides. One possession games. It's been the story of Pitt's season. As Jeff Capel says, you know what? Very easily, we could be 8-2, and two, at least 7-3, and 6-4. and four. He's been disturbed by that 4-6 and six number as Tony finishes. Tony has 15 points. But what are you doing on both sides to keep this a 1-2 possession game? Well, for Miami right now, I'm going down low to Miller. Let him go to work. There it is. Fundamentals by the big fellow, but the rebound by Champagny. McGowan's too strong. And Miami ball. In the close games, a large part of the narrative in the ACC this season, also road teams have been playing well, winning 48% of Conference play games, best mark since 1955, and 45 of 79 conference games decided by single digits. Staggering enough. And I'm going to give a close edge in this game uh, to Pittsburgh. Uh, we talked about it with Chris Likes being out. He's typically the go-to guy in the game situation for Miami. I think back to the Clemson game on the road uh, earlier on for Miami. Uh, Chris Likes uh, put up a huge game. I believe he had 28 in that game and a game-winning runner in the lane so uh, obviously a big blow not having him in the lineup if you're in Miami to close this game out. The lob to Miller who gets doubled. Harlan Beverly freshman from Detroit misses the three. Miami 0 for the last eight on three-point attempts. They're missing Chris Lights, the preseason All-ACC's second teamer, eighth in the league in scoring, and the groin issue has plagued him. Talked to Jeff Capel yesterday. What concerns you about Miami? First thing out of his mouth, Chris Lights. Didn't know he wasn't playing. But I think if you talk to any coach around the league, they'll tell you the same thing. Chris Lights. And obviously, you know, if you're Jim Laranega and staff, you have to be pleased with how your team has played. Uh, with your leading scorer out. Likes dynamite, and what a dynamite high school career he had in Washington, D.C. at Gonzaga High School. Think about the adversity he's had to deal with at 5'7". Something that's always been questioned, no doubt, throughout his career. Can you play at that height, and can you play well? Uh, can't measure heart, and he's got one of the biggest in college basketball. And right now, though, Miami, again, with the 2-3 matchup zone, they are forcing Pitt uh, into some deep contested threes. Now, let's see what Miami does. I'm going to say go right back down low to Rodney Miller. Let him get a touch. Force Pitt to double. Run your offense through him. Pitt shooting 30% from three as a team, 11th in the conference, but four for 21 in this one. Vasilovic. If anyone can hit that shot, it's him. And the rebound kept alive by Wardenberg. Wardenberg, his sixth board. Yeah, and that's really big time heads up play by Wardenberg. No, he couldn't get the rebound, but tipped it out to his teammate. And the three is good by Harlan Beverly. Miami, one for their last nine. Well, if you're pit right now, you have to get the ball to the foul line area or short corner. Can't float the ball on the perimeter. Johnson trying to initiate on Wardenburg. There's Miller. What a great rebound by Rodney Miller. Here comes Beverly pushing it, and he lays it in, coast to coast, for Harlan Beverly, and a timeout for Jeff Capel. The feisty Miami Hurricanes, they may be shorthanded, but they say, you know what? We're not flustered by that. They were down by nine at halftime. That's a 30-second timeout. What an impressive move by the freshman from Detroit. All set up by Wardenberg on the offensive glass. And then right here, uh, the freshman. We were looking to see how Miami would react to having Chris Likes on the bench. Harlan Beverly with the nice little look off and finish. Beautiful execution 
at the end of this game uh, by the young freshman of Miami. And Arlen Beverly has had to grow up fast for Jim Laranaga and company with all the injuries. Told us before the game that it's all about being shorthanded. They've not had a full roster pretty much the entire year. They have a transfer that they're very high on. He can't play until next year. Nicere Brooks, who came from Cincinnati. So he'll bolster their cause in the front court next season. But for the time being, they're doing it with a lot of band-aids. But Brown with a good counter punch out the timeout by Cape. And good adjustment by Coach Capel coming out of that timeout. Uh, he must have told his guys we have to get the ball into the paint off the bounce or by the pass. Good post up that time and post entry pass. Well, when you're only shooting 35 and a half percent, you need more paint touches and you've missed 17 threes. And this is what teams typically do to attack a zone, either post a big or flash a big. I think the key thing in that though, the post entry pass was on point, caught the ball in the paint and that's a nice finish. Sielovich to trigger for Isaiah Wong. Screen by Wardenberg. Wong attacks the rack. And Champagny called for the foul. That's his third. Do you like what Miami is doing? Moving the ball around the perimeter. And the ball screens we talked about in the first half, but that's going to continue for them that's what they do offensively it's all about the one-on-one -on -one game isn't it well I think you know the the big number that has gone down in this second half is the turnovers you know you look at for the game a pit has 22 points off of turnovers uh, but you're right I think the ball movement in particular the interior passing and then uh, this young man at the foul line Isaiah Wong to go along with Harlan Beverly of uh, the freshman backcourt they've done a nice job taking care of the ball and breaking down this pit D a quick tape job on Justin Champagny who drew Blood and Champagny had to deal with the flu the last couple days. But he's gritting it out for the Panthers. As Isaiah Wong will have two shots. Miami's 13 of 15 at the line. Wednesday is National Signing Day, and the huddle will break down all the ACC recruits with our signing day special at 5:30 Eastern, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Jordan Cornette, Tom Luganville, Eric McClain, E.J. Manuel, Mark Rick, they'll all take you through each school with highlights and evaluations. No one covers the ACC like we do. What an important day for all these colleges trying to find uh, that next gym to take them to the national title. Five to shoot for Pitt. Baseline McGowan's Tony. They're going to look at that. Now, not sure if he got it off on time. Ref wiped off the board upon further review, so it's tied at 51 with Malcolm Huckabee. Our producer, Rick, Rick Walensic. I'm John Mita Perel. Great to have you with us. In this series, the average score, Miami 69, Pitt 68. Right now, Pitt back into a 2-3 matchup zone, so giving Miami a different look. Wardenberg with the three and Tony the rebound. A nice adjustment by Jeff Capo going to a little three quarter court pressure back to a two three matchup zone. I think that uh, really caught Miami off guard. Yeah, Miami has struggled, Malcolm, shooting the three as well. They're three for 19. Tony thought about the three. Johnson with two to shoot. Not what they're looking for. And a shot clock violation again for the Panthers. A great job of contesting this shot that time uh, by Miami. And a good job again keeping them out of the paint. You have all five guys on the same page. Miami clogging up the middle. The pressure. And Wong still scoops it up. And he's got it. Isaiah Wong. Tenacious. The freshman belying his years. 15 points. The 
pass by Johnson to Champagne, but he got smothered. Here's Johnson, another three. And he's got it. Three counts. Now it looks like there's going to be a foul there on is. Champagne, and it, it's a one and one situation. Oh, excuse me. A, a, yeah. So that's, again, a momentum. That's the fourth on the freshman Champagne. Yeah, just when you thought Pitt was going to get a little momentum going, basically took the life out. Let's see what happened here. Nice heads up play, falling out of bounds. Xavier Johnson with a wide open look. That's. Yeah, Good break for Pitt right there. Missed free throw. Miami's only missed three in 17 attempts. So a strange sequence there. Foul on Champagne. The three counts. First three of the game for Johnson, who's one for seven. He's been held to nine points. Tony leading Pitt with 15. Here comes Johnson again. He's feeling it. And Xavier Johnson, their last five points. Miami busting pressure. Beverly. Oh, he attacks it just like Isaiah Wong. I'm so impressed with this freshman backcourt. A duo of Miami. Uh, they have played under control to close this game out and made some huge plays in transition and finishing around the rim. Champetti, the foul line jumper. And Vasilovic has it. A thriller at the peak. Final 90 seconds offensively. What's Miami doing? I got to get Miller a touch. Or let him go to work or bring him up for a high screen and let your guards on that freshman duo go to work, see if they can get into the paint. Down the three, Beverly and Tony with contact. That's a foul on Isaiah Wong, says Teddy Valentine. Third on Wong. Well, they've been hot going to the basket. That's a contested deep three. Both guys getting after it on uh, the offensive glass and defensive glass. Miami takes a timeout. Final 68 seconds. And the last two buckets. Buckets by Xavier Johnson. And this is what they need to do. Bring a big up, either flash him or have him come up and set a high ball screen. And that's a beautiful adjustment. Xavier Johnson, a right end rhythm. And then right here, this is just a beautiful finish uh, by the freshman, Beverly. Uh, breaking down that pit full court pressure, not panicking, not turning the ball over. Great body control and finish with the left. Miami trailing by nine at halftime. They trail by as many as 10. I think the whole story of the second half, though, has been Pittsburgh's inability to establish themselves on the offensive end, a testament to the zone instituted by Miami's coaching staff. Pitt shot just 27% in the second half, and Miami's combated that with 45% shooting. Yeah, and I think to close this game out for Pitt, one of the things you have to do, you have to get ball movement. You don't want to just uh, get possessions or a possession where you have one pass or two passes and then somebody uh, takes a deep contested three, work the ball around, you have a one-point lead, and then try to get into the paint. Under a minute remaining in regulation. Handoffs around the perimeter. McGowan's trying to navigate the Canes D. Johnson with a screen by Brown in the lane. Xavier Johnson. He's got seven points in the last a minute and a half. 13 for the game. Where's Miami going? If you're Miami, you have to get into your offense earlier. You still have time to go down low to Rodney Miller, but right now they're taking too much time. Beverly, he's been excellent in the lane and a foul. 
assist on Terrell Brown. Third on Brown, the big fella from Providence. Well, earlier I made a comment how Pitt had the advantage with Chris Likes uh, being on the bench. That's his beautiful body control by Xavier Johnson. And then right here, the freshman, again, drawing contact, getting to the free throw line. Miami, 14 of 17, now 15 of 18 at the line. Key Stone in for Rodney Miller. Where are you going with that substitution, Stone for Miller? Oh, obviously that's defense uh, for offense. Obviously, Miller, you want him on the floor. You don't want him getting fouls right now. They're going to try to get a trap. If you don't get the steal right away, if you're Miami, then you're going to foul. And Pitt takes its final timeout. Miami has one remaining. Once again, the average score in this series, 69-68 in favor of Miami. Miami has won the last seven meetings, including earlier at Coral Gables, where they beat the Panthers. It was 66-58 in that one, but an admirable comeback by the U playing shorthanded, and Jim Laranega deserves a lot of credit for the adjustments he's made, and Pittsburgh as well. You know, this thing's been very precarious in terms of getting off sides for both sides. Miami's made their run, Pitt's made their run, but they both counterpunched effectively. How early do the fouls come here? Well, for Miami, you have at least, I'd say, about five seconds, uh, four to five seconds to try to get a steal off the inbounds or out of a trap, and then you got to think about fouling. You also have to be aware of Pitt running somebody long. I remember back, you have a little home run play, most teams have it where you bring bigs up and then you'll run a guard or a wing long. So you have to have somebody back playing safety. For Pitt, it's simple. You have to get the ball in. If you don't have somebody running long, uh, you cannot turn the ball over. Obviously, you want to have either your best free throw shooter or one of your best free throw shooters coming up to catch the ball, and then obviously uh, it's going to come down to making free throws. Another thing to keep in mind, Miami has fouls to give. They only have four team fouls. Champagny inbounding to Johnson. There's their fifth team foul on Isaiah Wong. That's his fourth. Long, the freshman from Piscataway, New Jersey. Has grown up in a hurry. 15 points for Wong in 39 minutes. So 16.1 remaining in regulation. Let's see if Miami can get a face guard, try to come up with a deflection or steal. Already contact foul on Willie Harrington, a walk-on, his first. First time we've seen him on the floor today. One more to give for Miami. 16 fouls, and there it is. Foul on Harlan Beverly, and that will send Pitt to the line. Fourth on Beverly. So interesting strategy, but you don't want to take those fouls home with you. Makes sense. Well, one of, I think, the advantages also for Pitt, both guys, you know, in particular McGowan's, above 70 from the free throw line coming into this game. So 15.5 seconds uh, to go in this one. Miami still is going to have a chance to either tie or go ahead depending on what McGowan's does from the free throw line. And their first trip to the line in the second half, he cashes in. Trey McGowan's with 14 points, one of three Panthers in double figures. Backcourt of Johnson and McGowan's, 27 combined points. Money shots by McGowan's. Timeout Miami. Miami is only three for 20 on three point attempts. As they call their final timeout. 
And Jim Laranego will set up a play. Where are you going, Malcolm? Well, again, in this situation, uh, you have DJ Vasilovich, uh, one of the better three-point shooters in the ACC. I think some type of quick hitter pin down, whether it's a dribble handoff or getting him off a pin down set up by Rodney Miller. Uh, but obviously, 15.5 seconds, you have to get into your offense quick. I think back to my earlier point, the advantage that Pitt had is their backcourt. Again, Chris Likes on the bench for Miami. Typically, he's the guy that closes games out for them. Uh, Trey McGowan's and Xavier Johnson. Again, it wasn't pretty, but this is how you're going to have to win games at times. Uh, it looks like uh, that backcourt experience could be the difference in this game. And usually it's a three-man show with Ryan Murphy in their backcourt, but he's on the bench with a concussion for Pitt, and the game's coming up. Pitt at Notre Dame. And then home games with Georgia Tech and Clemson. Miami, they've been road warriors. Currently in the midst of an 11 game stretch from January 21st right, to February 29th. Four games at their Watsko Center in Coral Gables. They're logging the freaking flyer mileage. <laughs> Just like Malcolm Huckabee. Oh, this crowd sensing uh, this is such an important game for Pitt. Uh, we've shown the standings throughout this game. Uh, they are trying to climb up in the standings in the ACC. Uh, this is one they have to have at home uh, versus a short-handed Miami team. Pitt trying to equal its win total from last season when they won 14 games. They would improve to 14 and 8, but here we go. Harlan Beverly. Miami taking too much time. Yep. Vasilovich from way downtown. Wow. McGowan's with a rebound. Vasilovich, I think, lost track of the time. Yeah. Took a shot from just in front of the half court line. Yeah, just uh, really careless. Now, I praised the freshman backcourt of Beverly and Wong, but that time, Beverly taking too much time to get the ball up court and to get into their offensive set. He still had seven seconds, Malcolm, yeah, to just, get a better shot. Yeah, just too much time, though, to get into that. And obviously, that's not the shot you want almost from half court, a contested three. And McGowan's has made his last three free throws. Well, somebody asked uh, Jeff Capel if his team has matured, and I think in this game right here, although it was not pretty at times, uh, this is part of the process in terms of growing and also how to close out and win games. And uh, his backcourt, McGowan's and Johnson, made plays uh, to put them on top. And ice water for McGowan's at the line, making his last five free throw attempts. But this is a growing game for Pitt. Jeff Capel told us we need to close out games. We need to finish games in our final ten in conference.